in addition to your uh, all your innovation fund, the ARKK, which is your main one, uh, you also run the ARK Industrial Innovation ETF. ARKQ is the symbol there. Uh, this obviously invests in companies that are being disruptive in the in the tech area, but it has the word industrial in it. And sometimes yeah. people don't understand industrial and technology in the same sentence. And I keep explaining that essentially technology is an overlay across all industries. Can you explain this fund a little bit? What, what is it about industrial innovation that you're looking at here? And what's, what's the leaders in this? What do you own in this fund? Sure. Uh, thank you for asking, Bob. Uh, we have actually renamed that fund uh, for exactly the reason you're saying. It was a uh, for many people, that was an oxymoron, industrial innovation, which it is not. Technology is moving into the industrial sector in a, in a very profound way. Um, and uh, so we have renamed it uh, Autonomous Technology and Robotics, just to get a sense. And you can, so uh, autonomous vehicles, Tesla's the, Tesla really is in the pole position. So that's our largest uh, position there. Uh, robotics generally, actually, autonomous vehicles are robots, but in terms of robotics uh, in, in the way you and I have understood uh, that category historically, Teradyne is uh, our number one pick. Uh, and most people don't know Teradyne as having anything to do with robotics, but they bought a company called Universal Robots from, uh, it was a Danish company. and. Uh, that has, uh, it's, it's a small part of their revenue base right now, but uh, costs of industrial robots are dropping, especially collaborative robots or cobots to such a level. We think that costs, uh, the cost of one of these robots within a few years will be ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000. And so very price competitive for menial jobs uh, where there's probably a shortage of labor. Let's hope there is a shortage of labor in the next couple of years uh, as this economy rebounds. 3D printing is a big part of that fund. So you'll have Stratasys in there. Uh, Proto Labs, which is a quick turn manufacturing company, which also is in the 3D printing space, as well as Materialize, which is software in the 3D printing yeah. space. 3D printing has been held back by autos in particular and now aerospace. Uh, but we think crisis creates opportunity and that uh, uh, that it yeah. is going to accelerate the demand for 3D printing. Where are we on 3D printing? Because uh, 10 years ago, it was such a huge thing. I did so many stories mm -hmm. on it and we had a major problem 10 years ago. There was nothing to invest in. You know, you mentioned about Teradyne and the robotics firm, small part of their revenues. There was almost no pure play. Well, there were Stratasys, but there weren't many back then. And yet the, the news on it has kind of died down. I, I have friends that are in the um, in the old car business. They like buying muscle cars from the 60s and the 70s. Uh -huh. And apparently it's a revolution. You can now buy 1969 Camaro parts that are essentially made in, in uh, 3D printed. Uh, you can buy carburetors or things like that. This is what I am told. And so it's transformed that business, uh, it seemed. But how is it changing I industry? Is it really going to break through now? Yes, it, it is. And uh, uh, you ask where it is. It's in the valley of despair. Many stocks are down 80 to 90 percent from their highs because their focus was on the consumer space and not on the industrial space. Aerospace, if it, aerospace companies like Boeing and Airbus, their gross margins are in the 15 to 20 percent range. 3D printing, now that the FAA is approving it, 3D printing can cut those costs by up to 90%, as well as lower the weight and form factors of, of the various parts in engines and shrink the number of parts. So uh, aerospace, we think, uh, given the turmoil and, and trouble it's in right now, it is going to seek out even uh, more aggressively some of these yeah. new technologies that are going to help it get back yeah. to profitability. And, and, and is this feasible now? I mean, I know, like I said before, my friends are telling me, like old cars, you can get 3D manufactured auto parts. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's a big thing, big difference between that and a jet engine manufactured in 3D. Is, is this a feasible technology? Is it being used now? Oh, for definitely. Like it is absolutely feasible. There was a showstopper there for a while. The FAA was very concerned and needed to scrutinize every part, every material. Uh, but now it is seeing... Uh, you know, proof of concept and has become uh, much more accepting 
of uh, 3D printing. It sees the stress that uh, aerospace companies are under. And so uh, I think we're going to see a lot more approvals uh, of different materials and a lot more companies uh, starting to service the aerospace world. The other area that 3D printing has changed completely is uh, in the medical space, hearing aids. I think 95% of all hearing aids in the world are 3D printed. Uh, well, there are many medical really? a- applic. Oh yes, many medical applications. You know, ultimately hips and knees, and you know that are going to submit to 3D printing uh, because 3D printing allows for such incredible customization. So it's perfectly perfect for the high value uh, medical space for aerospace and autos. And, you know, autos and aerospace in real trouble. They are going to be turning to new technologies that are going to help them lower their costs, uh, lower the fuel consumption in terms of weight, and ultimately create different form factors. When we go autonomous, uh, we're going to see that some of us uh, might want to take an autonomous vehicle from New York to Boston and be able to sleep in it, whereas others just want to get across town and it can be a very much smaller or across campus. It can be much smaller. So we think uh, that entire autos ultimately will be um, 3D printed. 